This is Captain Obvious and welcome back with episode 12 of our Let's Play series Organic Road Layout. We will cover with details on the four steps to a successful city and there is no better way to prove that it works than playing 100% vanilla with no mods or steam assets. So if you play on console, these steps will work for you too. And the best part of these steps are that you can rinse and repeat as your city expands. To get started, we are going to expand to a new district in this area with the first step, which is the ever popular on controlling your traffic flow. There are two ways to control traffic. First is the road layout and second is transportation. Step 1 covers road layout in preparation for transportation. The absolute easiest way to prevent traffic in your city is to completely avoid or minimize four-way intersections. Also, if necessary, observe red roads that may require a one-way road. Since the theme of our city is organic road layout, the roads may seem a bit funky at first, but when everything gets filled in, it would look just absolutely gorgeous. Second step is proper zoning, services, and education. The order of zoning at any new area is always residential, commercial, then industry or offices. Even though let's say you have more commercial demands, you should always still prioritize zoning and residential first and providing education. It's like when you start a new city, you need residents before they can start working. And if you zone commercial or offices first, then that's when you'll have issues of not enough educated workers. You first need the people there. Therefore, start with residential zoning, then gradually add in commercial and industry or offices. Also try to have more residents in that area than commercial otherwise you'll encounter the not enough customers issues so what we're doing is we're preventing future issues with your city that is by putting in residential first you will also need death care with a cemetery and a crematorium then of course add in the police and fire stations and finally provide education for new citizens with elementary and high schools in my case, I already have a campus set up around the city, therefore a university is not necessary. Before we continue with the final two steps, let's take a look at our overall city. First, let's check the traffic flow, which is at 93% with a 75k population, which is absolutely amazing considering that our city is completely modless now that 92 93 percent traffic flow is due to the first step which is traffic control by having a minimal four-way intersections so let's actually check out say this area so we're looking for four-way intersections so we got one here two here three there and four but there is not a lot after that so I made sure that there is not too many four-way intersections. So notice how the roads with four-way intersections are immediately orange or reddish. So the more you have four-way, the more traffic it will build up. So try to avoid putting in four-way intersections. Now step two mentions education in all levels. So notice how our education is completely maxed out from elementary, high school to university. Hence why the entire city has no issues such as not enough educated workers. And if it does happen, it eventually vanishes in a short time. And I also mentioned that you should have more residents in your area than commercial to prevent that not enough customers issue. Uh, also, take note that to use high density commercial sparingly. So let's check out where our high density is. So we only have a few here and a few there. And majority of our 
commercial are low density and of course uh, use offices to as noise buffers between your residential and your commercial zones uh, regarding industrial demand um, don't full zone offices so if you notice i have a lot of offices but i also have the dirty yellow industries because only these buildings will produce uh, goods for your commercial buildings so if you have too many offices and not enough of these ones then these guys will start to complain that they have not enough goods so having these is actually beneficial for your city and the best place to put these uh, yellow industries is where your garbage facilities are and this is how you keep your entire city happy which is one part of having a successful city so our city has no complaints whatsoever which is awesome at 75k population and if you follow the four steps properly it will work beyond 100k population now the third step is economy with your point of interest or entertainment other than bad traffic or your citizens complaining about something, the next worst thing is having negative weekly income. Therefore, in every new district area is an opportunity to increase your weekly income and one of the best ways to do that is with Park Life DLC. In this episode, we will add a zoo since we don't have a zoo in our city and I would like to make this city have everything from each DLC. One of the biggest issues when creating a park is having sims visit your park. So one great way to get more visitors to your park is by utilizing the transportation stations to get sims in and out of your park. When they enter the park gate, that's a visitor count and that's instant income. It may seem like a game hack to tricking your sims to enter the gate in order to make income, but the money made always goes back to the city when you expand and build. It doesn't hurt your sims in any way, regardless of what type of income family they are in. It's just playing a smart vanilla game. And it all it's also a great way to level up your parks quickly. Another great way to get your sims to visit your parks is to provide commercial buildings in and around your parks. This way, they are not only visiting your zoo, but they are also shopping while in your zoo areas. So if you combine to having gates from the main station or hub to get across and into your new area or district, then have commercial buildings along and in the zoo area then leveling up and gaining income will come quite easily. This technique can work with all park types, that is the city park, amusement, zoo, and nature reserve parks. And if you continue to apply this strategy throughout your city with each expansion, then your city will be extremely profitable. In fact, in a past city, I was able to afford to have all unique buildings in my city that is basically every vanilla building in the game and my weekly income was still in the positive. However, you had to combine the income strategy from industries, campus, park life, and fishing to achieve this. Here is a bonus tip. You'd want to pay close attention to this strategy because it's absolutely brilliant. So, to get more sims to visiting your parks or pass through gates, you should also set up a stadium or concert in the transportation stations. It's like hitting several birds with one stone. Your stadium needs visitors to win the match, so you provide a station to transport sims to your stadium while you set up a park before reaching the stadium. So in essence, you get visitors in both your park and stadium which gives you tremendous income we now have more than enough required entertainment for the final level 5 of our zoo we do however want to add in all zoo buildings and the last structure that we don't have is the sea life enclosure of course we need water in order to place down the sea life enclosure building 
but instead of placing the building down by the river, we will create an artificial lake which will pour out into the river with a mini waterfall. To make your waterfalls, instead of making a smooth slope going into the river, make the slope steep. The steep slope will give the waterfall effect, though I am not aiming to create an extremely steep waterfall, just enough that it looks appropriate for the area. As you are making your mini waterfall, you are also filling in the lake to a near full capacity. Just make sure that there is a tiny spout that would flow out of the lake and into a direction of a nearby river or ocean. To make a convincing lake, it has to be filled to the brim which will remove the ugly soil cliff on the sides. And to wrap up this area, we are going to redo our roads to match our overall theme of organic road layout. The buildings zoned on the road by the lake also serves as a power connection for our water outlets that fill our lake. Now that we've completed our zoo, let's see how much it is earning when you combine your park with a tier 1 transportation station which in this case is our metro monorail train hub. It is earning a decent 11k per week which is respectable and should be able to afford all the unique buildings in this area and have leftover change. However, it is still very much possible to increase the weekly earnings like for example our Stu Energy Park right here which is earning 37000 per week and our grand total of our weekly park income is 136k so definitely the step 3 economy of a successful city is definitely checked i also mentioned that you can also apply this strategy to help boost the visitors for your stadiums and win you games so let's check out how many wins do we have look at that we have five one score and also take notice that we are not using any extra expenses. We don't have free transportation on game day, none of this. It is just win, win, win. And the last, but definitely not the least, which is the fourth step to have your successful city is to provide transportation for going in and out of your new district. And to also provide a mode of transportation within the district. This all goes back to step one, which involves controlling your overall traffic flow with the right road layout combined with transportation. Since we've used trams throughout the city, we will be adding in a bus line for variety's sake. Take note though, that buses can only be applied when there are barely any high density residential or commercial buildings. Otherwise, you will have the unwanted 1000 plus queue of people waiting at bus stations or have too many buses queued in line which doesn't look pretty at all. If the district has majority high density then a tram is the optimal choice. Here we will be observing the number of passengers waiting at the bus stations and we will be gradually adding in more buses until about more or less 50 people are waiting at the bus station. In the same time, while we gradually add in more buses, we will make sure that there isn't a long line of buses queuing in a stop. And there we have it. We have an efficient bus line with a reasonable number of passengers waiting at stops and a reasonable number of queued buses. But first, we will define what is a reasonable number of passengers which applies for all transportation types. So for our bus line, be aware that there is a maximum passenger capacity of 30. So let's observe this. So we have some buses that are completely full while there are some which is nearly empty, which is completely fine. It is possible that the people got off and it is empty and now it's just being filled in in the following stop. So this is completely fine. And the next thing you want to do is compare 
to the number of people waiting at stop. So in this instance, so we're scrolling and we find that there's 43, around 40 plus people waiting, which is completely fine. They, they The remain people that get on, which is the maximum of 30, some of them would have to wait for the next bus, which is, which is fine. They just need to wait for the next one. As long as there isn't like a hundred to a thousand people waiting and the maximum capacity is only 30, you know that's wrong. You don't want to be waiting like for 10 buses for you to get to your next station. And what happened here? Our train line collapsed. That is insane. All right, let's look at that. This is the first time I've seen this during my tutorial and suddenly this happened. And look at all the trains waiting. Okay. All right, it's gonna get repaired, hopefully soon enough i think they're looking for survivors and there we are okay everybody's happy game on all right so moving on now let's define the queued number of buses so looking at this there is maybe just about two buses there you go two buses waiting which is fine right that is a reasonable number of queued buses you don't want like 10 10 more or five two is good right so you don't want too many of that and the next thing we'll have to do is let's actually check the area right so again this is one tile and the area we're doing is right up here so that is half a tile so that is exactly the type of area where you want to be using a tram or a bus line any anything bigger uh, you should consider other modes of transportation uh, a tram could also occupy or uh, accommodate a, an entire tile but if it's going to a succeeding tile or another or tiles away then you should consider using a train such as this a monorail or a metro line And we actually have a bonus fifth step, which is how to control the death wave that comes in three parts. First tip is not to zone large areas of high density residential all at one time. So the logic is when a large influx of citizens move in or are born will also equal about the same amount of sims dying, hence the term death wave. The second tip is to provide a lot of death care in your new districts as explained in step 2. So notice how we have a bunch of cemeteries accompanied with crematoriums scattered throughout the city. So this will definitely make sure that if somebody dies, they will be picked up immediately. And the third and final tip, which is to add the elder and child care throughout your city. So that is what we are going to do here. So we already have a elder care here and there. Notice how the radius pretty much uh, occupies the, the entire area. That goes the same here and there. And you just have to make sure that the radius covers the high density so we will add that here and we will also place in the child care right next to each other i suggest putting them together uh, because they pretty much go hand in hand just like socks and shoes though you can spread them out if you want to but just like alcohol and firearms they just always seem to find a way to come together if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. This is Captain Obvious, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.